Imagine with me for a moment. You walk into your next interview with so much confidence because you know you're not just another applicant, but you are the applicant. Imagine being able to articulate your knowledge and your skills and your experiences so well that the panel can't help but want to hire you. In today's episode, we're going to turn the interview from a nerve-wracking, stress-filled event to you having a standout performance and being ready to take that next job. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're starting right now. Hey, everybody. Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. On this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any of our latest episodes or any of our best content. Today, we're going to talk about what else? The interview. The interview for an educational position, an educational leadership position, a teaching position. We're going to give you some big ideas to think about that are going to help you stand out, help you stand out amongst the crowd, help you kind of rise to the top. Now, I know I'm with you. I understand how challenging and how concerning it can be to go through the interview process. You get all nervous, your tongue, you, you know, get tongue tied, your words get twisted around. I want to, I want to take a moment just to tell you it's okay. Everybody gets nervous. I myself recently went through an interview process myself and I was nervous and that's okay. Nervous means that you care. It means you care deeply about what it is that you're engaging in the conversations that you're going to be sharing, the questions you're going to be answering, the people you're going to be talking to. When you're nervous, it means you care. It means that it means something to you. It means that it matters. That can come through for the panel. So don't panic too much about being nervous. We got tips, we got strategies, we got breathing exercises. We got all kinds of different strategies to help you with that type of stuff. So it's okay. Just rest in the moment, enjoy the interview to the best that you can, right? No, it's not always comfortable, but just think about the joy, the, exi the excitement and the exhilaration when you actually get the call that you got the job. There's no better feeling than knowing that you were the candidate who stood out and then they extend that offer to you to advance your career, to start your career, to go and do something meaningful for and around kids, for and around a school community, for and around a city or a community. So with that, we're gonna talk about three strategies today uh, and I know they're gonna be helpful so grab your pen and grab your paper and take some notes because this is going to be helpful. All right, let's jump right in with strategy number one. All right, strategy number one. It is all about understanding the specific needs of educational institutions, specifically the school site, the district that you might be interested in working in. Knowing and understanding the specific details the nuances about that institution, about that organization, about that school site sets you apart. It tells the panel that you've spent time, you've invested your time, you've invested your energy into learning more about them, wanting to know more about them, that you're curious, that you're insightful, that you're analytical. And so you're tapping into their social media, you're tapping into their district website, you're going to places to get their data, you're going and trying to figure out as much information as you can so that way you can personally connect. You can then take that information that you've gathered from those different sources. Again, social media is a great place to start. What's their TikTok or their Instagram or their YouTube channel or their LinkedIn, whatever the case may be, what are those places telling you about the institution, about the organization? What are you learning about them? When you go to the website and you start digging in, what are the things that pop up on the homepage? That tells you where their time, their energy, and their attention and their focus is. That tells you what initiatives really matter. That tells you a little bit about their personality, their persona as an organization. So as you dig in and you gather that information, the next most important piece is how do you now align what you've learned, what you've come to understand about them how do you now align that with your specific skills, knowledge, experience, 
and expertise because those things then allow them to say, we are who we are. And now this person that we're talking to today, they have something that will add value to the things that we're already doing. The number one thing that we always want to do, no matter what job we're in, no matter what organization we're serving, no, what, no matter what mission we're pursuing, is adding value, making it incrementally better every day, incrementally, incrementally better every week, incrementally better every year. That's the whole kit and caboodle, right? So you can only do that when you know and you understand the nuance and the individual kind of cool things, right? Academic term, the really cool things about the organization, the things that they matter, that matter to them and that they care about. Because if you're going to thrive in that environment, they're gonna to need to matter to you and you're gonna to need to care about them as well. So do your due diligence, do your research, get curious about the organization and then figure out how to align that to who you are and what value you add. And that will help enhance your ability to communicate that effectively during and throughout the interview process. And that's strategy number one. All right, so as we think about uh, moving to strategy number two, I wanna pause for just a moment. And as we talk about knowing and understanding the specific needs of the institution, the specific needs of a particular school site you're, you're interested in, you know, share with us in the comments below when has knowing and being curious about an organization and then being able to demonstrate that in the interview, when has that helped you in the past? Share that experience in the comments below. It's going to add value to the community. It's going to share some insights and some wisdom, and it might actually give somebody an additional strategy that they may be able to use as they're going into their next interview. So share with us in the comments below a time that you, your knowledge of an educational or institution's specific characteristics, you know, their nuances when that's helped you in an interview. Share that in the comments below and let's move to strategy number two. Okay, jumping straight into strategy number two. It's all about showcasing your soft skills and your levels of emotional intelligence. This is now a critical set of skills that you have got to be able to demonstrate. Your interpersonal skills, your ability to team, to collaborate, to mediate and resolve conflicts, those interpersonal skills, your ability to connect with another person, to be able to talk through issues, to be able to grow, develop, nurture ideas, new concepts, new initiatives. These are high level skills that have always been necessary, but it's become more and more critically important to kind of bolster or put those skills on an even higher level of importance and a higher level of emphasis. Kind of coming out of a pandemic and being separated from one another and now coming back together, you know, really enhancing our ability to connect with each other in a real authentic way and to be able to talk, to be able to discuss, debate, dialogue, those interpersonal skills are critically important. Our ability to showcase our, our soft skills or our emotional intelligence you know, things like empathy, thinking things like resilience and self-awareness. These are all very, very high level skills that more and more school leaders like myself, uh, principals, directors, people are in positions to hire, hire you, give you uh, opportunities in education. We're looking for folks who have high levels of EQ. The technical skills Time and time again, we feel we can train you, we can coach you on the technical skills, the data analysis, the lesson design, the unit design, the cr crunching of numbers, all of that we can, we can professionally grow and develop. It's a little bit harder to grow and develop high levels of emotional intelligence where somebody is just a compassionate and empathetic person kind of are you are you hired wired that way now you can learn it don't don't get me wrong I don't want to not being dismissive if it doesn't naturally come to you but are you willing to learn it are you open to it because if you have a high level of a, the emotional intelligence component of self-awareness you'll know that that's not a skill set that is natural to you but you'll be open to hearing listening 
and developing it with the right supports, with the right coaching, you know, with the right exposure, if you will. So thinking through, you know, high level interpersonal skills and high levels of uh, emotional intelligence is going to be critical because we are looking for people who can connect. We are looking for people who can sit knee to knee, eye to eye, elbow to elbow with somebody and help them grow and develop. That's what we're doing when we work with students. That's what we're doing when principals are supporting, coaching, and growing teachers. That's what we're doing when superintendents are growing assistant superintendents and directors. We're having to build a lot of interpersonal skills to be able to collaborate and to be transparent and to hold people to account. But having those high levels of interpersonal skills are layered right along with high levels of emotional intelligence, empathy, compassion, self-awareness. When we can get there, people will go further for you because it will demonstrate that you care. It will demonstrate that you're committed. It will also demonstrate that you are there for their growth and their development as well. And these are all things I'm going, I'm going to now I'm going to loop this back to the interview because these are all things that you want to find unique and interesting ways of displaying and demonstrating during the course of the interview. When you're on that stage and you're in that moment, you know, let it all hang out, like share all of the great things about you, share all of the wonderful skills and talents and attributes that you have. You know, this is back to, you know, to Clifton strengths and strengths based leadership and asset based growth and development and having this growth mindset. Figuring out ways to demonstrate all of that information is going to be critical to you being able to showcase who you are as a candidate. So just continue to imagine how do I demonstrate all of these skills and attributes that I have, right? With respect to interpersonal skills, with respect to emotional intelligence, show that, share that. People want to know about that. I certainly want to, and I know many of my friends and colleagues that are educational leaders are looking for that as well when we're looking to hire and grow people into the profession. So making sure that you can really, really showcase your soft skills and your emotional intelligence, it's going to be critically important. And that is strategy number two. All right. So as we roll into strategy number three, I'm going to ask you to pause for just a second. And again, share with us in the comments below, which of the soft skills that I discussed in strategy number two, which one struck a chord with you and share in the comments below, what soft skills do you think are most critically important right now today for educators as we move forward? Share that with us in the comments below. And remember, as you engage with the video, you share comments, you like, you share, you subscribe, it helps us to grow the channel. It helps us to get this out to more and more folks who can help increase and enhance their ability to be educators and educational leaders. So share that with us in the comments below, and we're going to move to strategy number three. All right, here we go. So strategy number three, building a narrative, telling your story effectively. Let me be crystal clear. We don't hire teachers. We don't hire principals. We don't hire directors. We don't hire assistant superintendents. We don't hire superintendents. We hire Erica, who happens to be a rock star teacher. We hire Harry, who happens to be a rock star principal. We hire people who happen to have a set of skills strategies, experiences, and let's pause on that one, experiences. We all have a story. We all have a series of life lessons. We've all gone through some stuff to get to where we are, to become who we are, what we are. To frame an idea of what we want to become is all a part of our story. Get really comfortable with getting ready to tell your story. Stories of triumph, stories of tribulation, stories of success, stories of failure, right? 
I'll give you an example. So my own story, uh, there was a, a point in my career where I wanted desperately to be uh, an assistant superintendent. Uh, and I kept applying for the job and I kept getting rejected. I kept getting rejected. I kept getting rejected. I was getting paper screened. So I wasn't even getting interviews. I was putting my paper out there. I was applying and I kept getting paper screened out. Uh, and so I had to take a really hard look at where I was, what I was experiencing, what experiences I already had. And it took humbling myself to go into talk to somebody whose opinion I deeply valued and respected and him sharing with me, Hey, Gordon, you really need some central office experience. You know, you can't, it's hard to jump from being, you know, high school principal straight to assistant superintendent. And I didn't like hearing that. I was not, I was not super excited about that. And after some deep reflection, I went back and I thought about, you know, and I humbled myself and I said, all right, well, let's figure out what that means. And so I recalibrated and I rethought about my own experiences and I got really, really clear on what I did know and what I did not know. I share this story because it's become a part of my leadership journey of thinking I had it all figured out, but I didn't. Humbling myself to ask the right questions of the right people who I trusted that would give me honest and real feedback and then using that to build on my own skills, my own strategies, my own experiences, and going backwards to go forward, right? Getting humbled to then take stock again and move forward. You've got a series of experiences. You've got stories. You've got success stories. You've got stories potentially of trauma and of loss, but it's formed who you are. It's giving you a new perspective on how to do this work, but also how to convey your experiences and why you're so passionate about the things you're passionate about, why it matters to you to be an educator, why it matters to you to be an educational leader, why it matters to you to be a director or principal or whatever it is that you're aspiring to become. Be able to tell that story. Be able to weave that in to the opening of your interview, be able to weave that in to the closing of your interview, leaving them with something to remember you by, leaving your name, leaving your name in their heads and in their minds is a critically important skill and strategy as a part of the interview process, but even more so, not just the interview, it will serve you well throughout your career because you will tell your leadership story, it'll be a part of you It'll be a part of your classroom experience, talking to your students about what they aspire to be, whether you're a principal and talking to your staff about who you are and where you want to go and what your mission and your vision is for the school. You're a superintendent talking to the school community, talking to the entire organization about who you are, what you value, all of your experiences and the ability to tell your story, to build that narrative and share it with the world is an important piece because it is who you are. It makes you you, and it makes you the person that's the right person to hire because we know who you are, we know your story. So build that narrative and tell your story and tell your story effectively, and that's strategy number three. And as we move forward, I'm gonna give you one more bonus strategy. So don't leave yet, don't leave. Don't click off, don't fast forward, stay right here. Because a post, you know, a post interview strategy, that's just a bonus, is gonna be following up. You know, post interview etiquette is really, really important. And a lot of people don't do it, don't do it very well. But having the ability to, again, you've already told them your story, you've told them that narrative, maybe to finish off the interview. So maybe they are maybe your head, maybe they're left, maybe your name, excuse me, is left in their head. And so imagine just a warm email, quick email thanking them, a warm kind of handwritten note, right? Because in a lot of cases, they may not deliberate and make a decision that specific day. They may think about it for a day or two. That might be able to get your, your follow-up into their consideration. That's a good strategy. Additionally, maybe it doesn't. Maybe they do make the decision that day. Maybe they, they don't select you, but your follow-up 
that follow-up email, that follow-up thank you note keeps you on their radar. And the next opportunity that comes up, your name is still in their minds because of your ability to be thoughtful, your ability to really try to establish and build a relationship and that post interview follow-up. That's really important. It's that, it's that white glove approach going above and beyond doing just a little bit more is the way that you can kind of really connect and really establish uh, where you are in their hearts and minds and additional opportunities can come from that. So think about how do you do that and think about how you continue to stay front and center. Think about how you continue to use excellent high level strategies. And so if you want more high level strategies around the interview, check out this next video right here. Uh, it's going to help you. It's going to help connect, connect the dots. It's going to add value to what you listen to in this video. And you're going to listen to that video. It's going to give you more skills, more strategies and more information. So don't forget to check out that. If you want more information about coaching, mentoring, support, you know, our team can help and reach out to you. Check the description in the comments below and continue to build your skills. Continue to think about leveraging your knowledge, your skills and experience and your expertise for the benefit of students and for the benefit of our schools. All right, check out this next video and we're gonna see you on our next episode. Be well, be well everyone. We'll talk to you soon.